This is your WBZH Daily News Roundup for the Buzz of the North, 910 a.m. in Hayward. Civic Media News. I'm Terry Bell. Here's what Wisconsin needs to know. The Wisconsin Elections Commission wants state lawmakers to create a new office on election transparency. Administrator Megan Wolf says public demand for transparency is growing. If approved, the office would operate inside the WEC and handle audits and voter accessibility. Democratic vice presidential nominee Tim Walls comes to Wisconsin today. He starts his weekend this afternoon in Wausau, then goes to Superior tomorrow. This will be Walls' second visit to Wisconsin in two weeks. He was in Milwaukee on Labor Day. School districts around Wisconsin will hold nearly three times as many referenda this year compared to last year. There will be 120 of them on November 5th. Governor Evers says the trend bothers him. What I'm concerned about, frankly, is when I hear when school districts have to go to referendum just for basics. That's an indication to me that the state isn't doing enough. State funding has remained relatively stable in recent years, but inflation is forcing school districts to ask voters for more. Wisconsin health officials are encouraging people to get their shots ahead of the cold and flu season. The Centers for Disease Control forecasts a milder season than last year, but that depends on how many people get their shots. Last season, about 35% of people in Wisconsin got their flu shots and 19% got the COVID vaccine. Officials say you don't have to go to your nearest Social Security office to do business with the agency. The SSA's Abigail Zapote says it's easier than ever to go online. They can report a stolen social security number at identitytheft.gov and then go through our replacement process at ssa.gov forward slash number dash card to get that replacement card. Zapote says you shouldn't carry your card in your purse or your wallet. A four-legged favorite of Milwaukee Brewers fans has died. Hank, the ballpark pup, became the team's unofficial mascot in 2014. He was a stray who wandered into the Brewers spring training facility in Arizona. After that, he came to Wisconsin to live with a Brewers executive's family until he died yesterday. The Brewers are asking people to donate to the Wisconsin Humane Society. I'm Terry Bell, Civic Media News. Now, here's what you need to know closer to home. For WBZH News, I'm James Kelly. The Duluth Police Department has joined an initiative to hire more women in law enforcement. The department has signed on to the 30 by 30 initiative, which seeks to have 30% of the officers in the department be women by the year 2030. About 300 law enforcement agencies have signed on to the pledge. The Duluth Police Department already has women in various roles of the agency, but officials say they need diverse representation at every level to ensure they're meeting the needs of the community. A Boy Scout troop in Superior is calling for community support after a trailer filled with equipment was stolen from an event. The trailer was stolen on Saturday night at around 8.15 from the parking lot of the United Presbyterian Church off North 28th Street. The troop is hoping to recover the trailer in the next couple of weeks before a planned camping trip with the equipment in the trailer. The Superior Police Department is investigating the theft, but the troop is asking residents to keep an eye out for the labeled trailer. Billionaire philanthropist and ex-wife of Amazon founder Jeff Bezos has donated millions of dollars to a Duluth nonprofit. On Thursday, the Entrepreneur Fund announced that they had received a $9 million donation from Mackenzie Scott and Yield Giving. The organization says they'll be able to use the donation to continue supporting small businesses in the community and promote economic growth in underserved communities in Minnesota and Wisconsin. Scott has donated billions of dollars to nonprofits. The Duluth Airport Authority has received an over $10 million grant from the Federal Aviation Administration. According to airport officials, the grant funding will go towards snow removal equipment, runway visual aid replacements, and Phase 5 construction and Phase 6 design on Taxiway A. The federal grant funding will cover about 90% of the total costs, with another 5% provided by the Minnesota Department of Transportation and another 5% from local commitments. The projects will improve safety and service. St. Louis County has received $15,000 of state grant funding to help remove invasive plant species like knotweed and wild parsnips. The knotweed can prove especially troublesome as it can damage the foundation of buildings. The wild parsnip can spread aggressively and could cause rashes, blisters, and increased sensitivity to sunlight in people who come in contact with it. Any resident who believes they have the invasive knotweed or wild parsnip plants growing on their property should contact the county. One person was injured and a University of Minnesota Duluth building was evacuated following a minor chemical explosion on Thursday. 
According to the Duluth Police Department, the person suffered minor injuries, but they were sent to a nearby hospital for treatment after being decontaminated. University officials say there was some minimal damage caused by the chemical explosion. Authorities have not shared what chemical was being used when the explosion occurred and the building was cleared for ventilation. The Superior Police Department has introduced a new dog to the force, but this one has a different job than the others. Mayor Jim Payne and the department's new therapy dog in training named Millie visited Bryant Elementary School on Wednesday. Mayor Payne says Millie's job is to provide emotional support to people who may be nervous about interacting with law enforcement authorities or have been the victim of a crime. Millie is just a puppy and is still in training, but will eventually work alongside a community service officer. Duluth's Denfield High School entered its secure protocol again on Wednesday, about a week after another incident. According to the Duluth Police Department, the protocol was activated when they received reports of a person with a weapon in the area of the school. After investigating, law enforcement authorities determined the call was just a disturbance and the protocol was lifted at the school. The new protocol is a partial lockdown of the school, closing all entrances and exits while allowing classes to continue inside. And that's what you need to know. For WBZH News, I'm James Kelly. History is made for the Brewers' youngest player. Hi, I'm Jimmy Cuska with sports, filling in for Mike Clemens. Jackson Churio became the first 20-year-old to hit 20 home runs and steal 20 bases in a season during Milwaukee's 3-0 win over San Francisco Thursday night. Milwaukee leads the NL Central by nine games with 16 games to play. The Brewers are in Arizona this weekend for a three-game series beginning tonight. The Green Bay Packers take on Indianapolis this Sunday, and they'll be starting Malik Willis at quarterback with Jordan Love out of action with an MCL sprain. Head coach Matt LaFleur said that Love is working towards returning soon. Uh, He's going to do everything he can to be out there and we'll give him the week. LaFleur added that Love has been at practice helping out this week. Yeah, he's, out, he's been out there at practice and been engaged, knows every play call, is always coaching up Malik, coaching up Sean, is doing a good job with it. Both the Packers and Colts are looking for their first win. Tomorrow is a big-time college football showdown in Madison. Alabama plays Wisconsin at 11 a.m. Filling in for Mike Clemens, I'm Jimmy Cuska with Civic Media Sports. On your entertainment beat, I'm Peach Waba. Grey's Anatomy fans will be happy at the return of a popular character for season 21. The show offered a sneak preview of what is to come after an intense season finale for season 20. The preview revealed the return of Jesse Williams' character, Dr. Jackson Avery. A recent blurb in The Hollywood Reporter insinuates that Avery will be butting heads with Dr. Grey. The plot thickens. True crime fans, take note. Hulu picked up an ABC-backed series called Little Miss Innocent, Passion, Poison, Prison. Variety reports that the story centers around Caitlin Connolly, accused of manslaughter in the death of her boss and the mother of her ex-boyfriend. In the three-part series, Connolly pleads her case as to why she was wrongfully sent to prison. The series was co-produced by ABC News. It's one thing to have a child outside your marriage, and another thing to have people claiming to be the mom of your out-of-wedlock child all over social media with pictures of babies and fake posts. This is happening to Dave Grohl of the Foo Fighters right now. The frontman acknowledged Tuesday that he had a baby girl with a woman who was not his wife. Now people are posting fake pictures of said baby and pretending to be the child's mother. Some sources are reporting that Grohl's wife, Jordan Blum, has hired a divorce attorney in light of the news. Grohl says he plans to do everything in his power to be a loving father to the new baby like he is to his three daughters with Blum. The Batman director Matt Reeves says his trilogy for the Batman will stick close to the trilogy he envisioned. Deadline reports that while Reeves was promoting his spinoff series, The Penguin, he assured fans and the media his vision for the franchise is sound. The Batman 2 is scheduled to start filming in 2025. At Nightlight, we talk about movies and TV and everything involving the arts. Sometimes we get a great suggestion from one of our guests of what we should be watching, and the other night was just such an occasion. Guest and author-comedian Roger Rittenhouse recommended the action drama film Rebel Ridge, starring Aaron Pierre and Don Johnson. Pierre is currently working on the Lion King prequel as the voice for Mufasa. Turns out he's pretty good at the live-action stuff, too. He plays a soft-spoken, mysterious victim, or so we think, as he is pitted against a crooked small-town sheriff played by Don Johnson. Also in the film is David Denman. You might know him from the sitcom The Office as Roy, Pam's fiancé. Denman is carving out a nice career for himself, choosing different roles and at times playing off beat bad guys. The movie is like a smarter version of Rambo. It's available to stream on Netflix and it's getting a 95% on Rotten Tomatoes. For more showbiz fun, tune in to Nightlight with me, Peach Waba, weeknights from 6 to 8 p.m. on the Civic Media Radio Network.
With your forecast, I'm Corey Hartman. For today, mostly sunny, a little breezy out of the southeast. Highs around 82 degrees. Mostly cloudy tonight, a low of 57. Showers and storms are possible on Saturday, otherwise mostly cloudy, with highs in the upper 70s. More showers and storms Saturday night. It's 60 at our studios. That's your WBZH Daily News Roundup from Civic Media. Subscribe to this podcast on Spotify, Apple, or wherever you find your podcasts. Find more news at buzzofthenorth.com.